Good evening, Upper Room Church. Pastor Nelson Rivera here addressing you on this beautiful Wednesday night. Um, and just want to say thank you to everyone who has been so helpful in helping us accomplish the final details um, to this building being officially 100% open. Uh, we are almost there. We are at the finish line. And so I want to thank everyone. There's too many names, too many people invested, sound, media, musicians, singers, ministers, uh, people that just come and want to work. And, and I honor you tonight for, for your work. And I believe God's going to bless you. And He's already doing it. And as you have already hopefully read uh, today that the governor um, has released some more information in the Attorney General has also released some information and, and it's looking good for our churches in California and just keep praying that God would open that door. I want you to know that we will, when we do open, we will be following all CDC guidelines. We will be and we'll uh, unveil that as it is, um, as it gets closer and we're meeting as a ministry team every week. Um, on Thursday nights to speak about how we're going to open, what we're going to do, and how we're going to do it. And so I just want you to be very uh, uh, cognizant that we are doing uh, the very best that we can to be in line uh, with your safety at the top of the list. And so I'm excited. God is with us and miracles are happening. Sister Carrie uh, gave us some information, a victory report this past week and on our Monday night, our group page, and just saying how God is working a miracle in her life uh, with the job situation for her husband. And I believe God is opening doors. He's opening doors that we do not even see yet, but He is opening doors, and I'm thankful for it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. I will be teaching Bible study tonight. I'm excited. Um, the Scripture says this, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The sower that sows with the most important of ingredients, um, he, he plans, he organizes, he envisions uh, and sees the results while yet having a barren land. Kind of like the church tonight, and I hope in your family that you're seeing the revival, the harvest, the great things that God is going to bring. You're seeing it already in the Spirit uh, before it happens in the flesh. He does it uh, without uh, thinking the worst, but hoping for the best. He invests effort, sacrifice, hard work. There has been many years of of blood, sweat, and tears that have been that has been poured into Upper Room Church um, did not happen just in the last few years. This has been uh, something with, that has been worked for years. Bishop Galoni, and before that, Bishop uh, Picklesheimer, um, uh, who has gone on to be with the Lord. The Chamber and Chamberlains. I mean, it just it continues. This is generational growth. This is spiritual growth of and years of, of effort, sacrifice, hard work, and many hours of commitment. But a sower that sows, he spends time, he, he, he spends money, he's, he spends effort. And the fascinating fact is that the effort is made, think about this, without seeing anything that is worth believing. The natural resistance of breaking the soils, the best presence of the negative, the weeds and the thorns and the thistles, but yet he sows believing a great result. Farmers apply this God-given principle every season, year after year, and they acquire the same results of victory. If you think about the United States of America, uh, we harvest, 
America imports and, uh, over and our market reflects the vast uh, results of their efforts and they live a miracle. Uh, they see, really, if you think about it, the supernatural take place and don't even realize it, that it has a powerful ingredient, uh, an ingredient that God gave every human being does not matter if small or great, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, but He invested in every person the power of faith. Faith, the ability of believing what is not visible, what does not exist in this earthly physical dimension. I was speaking to a couple here uh, a few days ago on Monday, and they were talking about a possible business venture. You know who you are. And, and they were speaking about it as if the victory had already come, as if the business is already there and they're having to hire more people. We were here talking vision casting and faith came into the room here in my office. Faith began to, why? Because God was giving us that wisdom, that passion, that love, and, and that affirmation, that peace that, saying, that was saying, hey, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to bless because you belong to me. You are my child, and I'm going to bless you. But you have to see it in existence in the spirit before it ever happens in the physical. Because just, beca just because I can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. God has invested in us the ability of creating what does not exist through faith. And the remodel is kind of that, that if you think about it, that, that's what we've accomplished. We, we've been talking about it for a few years. We've, you know, the, the elders have invested, have brought us to a place where we could do this and, and raise the money and, and take out a small loan and saying well, together we can do this because uh, they have brought us to this point. And God of creating what does not exist. And we have read it. Faith can move mountains. Faith can heal the sick. Faith can raise the dead. It can make something out of nothing. But faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the Scripture says. I don't see it with my eyes, but I believe that God is able. He's able. Some soweth, others walk is the miracle worker. I'm not the giver of increase, but if I don't sow, if I don't water, how is the increase going to come? Uh, it is the action uh, of faith that God uses. What is the evidence that the supernatural is present in your life? Ask yourself that question. It, it is the that works. What is it? But without, but faith did. You might as well just bury it. Action, doing something when nothing is visible. My marriage. We have to work on our marriage, you married folks. And those of you that are working toward marriage, you know who you are. You've got to make it work. You've got to court. You've got to date. During this time, we have talked about just, I mean, it has become difficult, right? You almost have to go out in your car and leave the kids with somebody and just spend time on your own. My children, I've got to invest in and, and reading them the Bible at night. Me and Vienna have this nightly ritual, and if I don't read her that uh, kid's Bible that I bought her on Amazon, she's going to let me hear it. Daddy, You every night we read our Bible. Uh, but I've got to invest in my children. We've got to spend time with our children. Uh, my jobless state, maybe I don't have a job right now, but I'm still looking. I'm on the computer looking and seeking. I'm not just sitting at home just collecting that unemployment check, check saying, well, it's, it's going to work out. Well, it, it's not going to work out if you don't start looking and, and doing your part. Uh, but you got to do something about it. When you're going through the desert, through the trial, uh, through a battle, without it, uh, without to please God. I, I've, I've had my faith moments where I, you know, on Sunday I preached about standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. And, and I was preaching that out of my spirit. Uh, us preachers, we preach what we're going through. You know, we're going through some stuff here. We're, we're, we're in the biggest, one of the biggest, really uh, uh, tumultuous uh, time where, where it's chaos. This world, and as a pastor, I mean, uh, you know, I've 
come to me and patted me on the back saying, you're experiencing things we, our generation has never, we have never gone through this. I don't think there's anybody alive, maybe one or two people in this world that have gone through a crisis of this nature where everything has shut down, yet we've got to believe that God is not worried. He's not afraid. We have to stand and believe that we're sowing with faith because the farmer invests his whole value, everything he has, in one seed, faith. Faith, the effort, the exercise, the battle of sowing his crop is built on the simple basis of faith, faith expressed, faith in action, doing something about it. Because every man has been given a measure of faith. You have it. You possess it. That is why listen to these sermons you know that that is why uh, you come to church when the doors are open it pushes you to keep praying for that need for that miracle it gives you the peace that passeth all understanding your current circumstance uh, you're driven not not by the outward circumstances but but by what lives inside of you uh, I know in whom I believe. I know he's my healer. and I know he's going to make a way out of no way. And this is how we operate in faith and, and do the things that we need to do. The scripture says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What's really frightening is as a moral, a free moral agent's, that we are, God often lets us sow seeds without interfering. We let that settle in. He stood back and watched Adam and Eve partake of the forbidden tree, and death instantly attacked him. He permitted Moses to disobey and strike the rock twice. And Moses didn't enter into Canaan. He willingly let King Saul ignore Samuel's warning and offer the sacrifice, and Saul lost his entire kingdom. He didn't interfere when David disobediently transported the Ark of the Covenant and a priest was struck dead and trying to steady the falling Ark. God doesn't always intrude upon our planting. That's why some of us are today might be experiencing a crisis in our life because of, of seed that we, we had sown years back. But the beautiful thing about the law of the harvest is seasons come and seasons go. You may be in a drought season here today, but I promise you there's a lot of people at Upper Room Church, there's a lot of saints that are saying, hey, I'm going to sow, although I do not see with my natural eyes today. I see it in the Spirit. You got to close your eyes, lift your hands and say, God, whatever it is that you need, you say, Lord, I... I'm seeing it. If it's a job, I'm seeing walking through those corridors of that workplace. If, if it's that marriage coming back together and God healing some things, Lord, I'm, I'm seeing those things those are not as though they are, but I'm also planting some things, some seeds, some spiritual seeds. I'm planting goodness and mercy and love because God doesn't intrude upon our planting. But he always orders the consequences. You can leap from, from, from the top of this building. We have a pretty high church building, two-story building. and You can leap off the mountain and say, God, give me a parachute on the way down. But the law of gravity is working with the law of sowing and reaping is inescapable. <laughs> you may get pardoned, but you won't get a parachute. You know? The, the law of gravity is working against you. And we are responsible for the decisions that we make. Think about the sacred place the Hebrew temple held with Israel. It symbolically represented everything about worshiping God. David had intricately, intricately Texture uh, by the the Spirit's inspiration, uh, the the Scripture says, and then contributed. It is estimated over a billion dollars toward its construction. Think about that. It contained hundreds of thousands of pounds of gold and silver. There was no monument more sacred to God than this temple 
and its furnishings. Yet Jesus said the consequences of Israel's rebellion would result in its total destruction. All the work, all the effort. And in 70 AD, the Roman emperor Titus attacked Jerusalem. He torched the temple and he completely leveled it and, le and not leaving one stone upon another. Wow. We will be held accountable. And if we're not careful, the generations, I have felt that. Bishop Galoni, I know you're watching. Sister Galoni, I know you're watching. During this season, during this time, our elder, Sister Tracy, and, and, and those of you, Sister Dolores, that have been here for a long time. Sister Reed, I mean, you've been here for years and years and years and years. You've invested your time, your talent, your treasure. You, you, you've given years upon years of peanut brittle selling and, and mega sales. I remember being a kid here, running around seeing mega sales. Oh God, we got to go to mega sales on the weekends. And, and the work and the time and, and the food being passed out to the homeless for years. So years ago, times of, of Bible study and passing down tracts in the hot sun and, and praying for people. And, and, and our elders have invested so much. And I felt that pressure the last few weeks, my prayer time. The Lord is saying, hey, I, I've got something special for Upper Room. And, and we've got a lot of young, and we've got a lot of young families, and we've got a lot of people that have come along. And, and man, they're enjoying the spoil. People are going to come in here. They're going to see a brand new building. You're going to see it completely brand new. Because maybe you've only been here a year. You've only been six months. You're saying, man, I'm loving this. But if we're not careful, I'm talking to the new generation, the younger generation. Those that have just started coming, if we're not careful, we will allow the enemy to take with so many others, generations here. If you think about this Hebrew temple, generations and people that took all, that God blessed the people. He blessed them with finances. He blessed them with, with riches beyond their imaginations. And they were blessed people. And yet it only took one generation to topple it all to make wrong decisions, to turn away from God, to get comfortable about where they are, and they lost everything. I plead with you, Upper Room Church, let's not squander what God has given us. Let's, not, let's look for the future. My goal is to always put the sustainability, and I say, you hear me say it all the time, the longevity and the sustainability of the church is, is at the forefront. God is at the center. He's, 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 at, he's first in line. He's, if He's not happy, we might as well close our doors because there's a difference between be, being anointed of God and having His acceptance, the acceptance of God. I want Him to accept me. I want Him to be happy with me. I want Him to, to, to tell me, uh, uh, Pastor Rebel, you're, you're doing what I've called you to do. So let's fight. Let's sow with faith. Let's, let's, let's not be afraid. Let's not be weary. But let's be vigilant. Let, let's not be reckless in what we do. Let's keep Him first. Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I love you, Upper Room Church. And I can't wait to see you. Just a few thoughts that I had tonight. I wanted to address you personally and let you know that there's going to be... Uh, things that we'll be releasing very shortly. We are getting ready to, to open very soon in the next few weeks, the governor has said. And I, and I wanted to address you, let you know, start seeing it in faith. Start seeing your family worshiping here with social distancing. Start seeing uh, your family being blessed and saying, hey, there might be a, a famine in the land, but my family is covered. We're protected because we are the child of the king. Lift your hands all across wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I love you today. I pray, God, that you would anoint us, that you would protect us, that you would guide us. Give us wisdom that passeth all understanding. Oh, let your anointing be in this place, a place of refuge, wherever they are, Lord, in their home, in their car, in their workplace, God. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would rest upon their lives, Lord, as we get ready to open here within the next few weeks. God, that you would give them that passion, that you would give them that love, that they would go back to that first love, Lord. You, God, you've been so good. You've been so faithful. You've been so kind. You've been so loving. You've been so merciful. Nobody knows the extent of your mercy and your love. I pray that you would protect them. 
that you would give us the wisdom as we come back and worship together, God. I pray you would bless their finances. They continue to sow. They continue to sacrifice for your kingdom, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would shield us from this coronavirus, Lord, that it would go from where it came. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody say amen. I love you, Upper Room Church. I'm so excited to see you very soon. Be vigilant. Thank you for having our Monday night prayers and coming uh, every Monday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., 12 hours. We are shaking the foundations. I'm telling you what, I have never felt more in tune with God as I do, as I do uh, at this point in my life. Not because uh, I see it. I feel the prayers of the people. We are together and God is going to to give us the greatest revival this church has ever experienced. I love you, and I'll see you soon. God bless.